Hi, welcome to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can use a table to format your project. So if I just go to the top left of this project, go up to table design and I'm just going to put the guidelines on. You can see the whole of this is made up with a table which is a brilliant guide to align everything in your project so it looks professional and cohesive. So I'm going to open a new document and the first thing I'm going to do is go to layout, go to my margins and select narrow because we want to capitalize on as much space on this page as possible. So the next thing is going to go to insert table and just for the time being, I'm going to do three columns and five rows. So as you can see, we've got very tiny narrow rows and three columns. Now the easiest way to do this is to actually type in your text first into whichever cell you need. So for example, I'm going to do some contact details across the top. So I'm going to go back to my original and here is the text that I want. I'm going to copy this because I don't think you want to watch me typing. And all I'm going to do is to paste it into this cell. Now, you would obviously type this, and if I go to the Home tab, I'm going to center the text using this icon. You can see this is the font I'm using, and this is the size of font. But with this top one here, this address, I've used bold, and I've also changed the font color to this blue. Now, you can choose from any of these colors, or you can go to More Colors, and you can just use this little cursor here and this slider to change to the color you want. So at the top here, you can see my address is very, very close to the top of the cell and the line and again at the bottom. So we need to correct that and we're going to correct it for the entire table. So select your table, right click, go down to table properties, go to cell, go to options, and then in cell margins, uncheck this option here. And for the top, I'm going to use the up arrow and go to 1.25. Same at the bottom, the left and the right. Click OK and OK again. And you can see now that the text is nicely centered in our cell and it will be for all the remaining text. So I'm just going to copy and paste the other two contact details and speed up the video. The next thing we're going to want to do is to put in the newsletter word. So I'm going to select all three cells. I'm going to go up to table layout and I'm going to go across to merge cells. Then type in the word newsletter, then select the font or the text, go to home, change the font if you want to. I'm going to pick this one here, Aroni. Then I'm going to use this icon here to increase the font size. And then you can roughly see how big you need it. Now, if I click it again, you can see it will go over. So I need between 90 and 80. So I'm going to put in 95. Okay, so now we're at 86. If we want it closer to the edge to line up with all of our text, we can simply go back, right click, go to table properties, go back to cell options, and you can change this. So the left one, we could bring down to zero. And then the top one, we're just going to increase to 0.4 and click OK. Click OK again. And you can see it's a little bit further from the top here and closer to the left here. So it stands a chance of lining up with the text when we go and put the rest in. So now you can go ahead and place whatever text you want into these cells. So for example, I want this text here, and obviously this is what you would have typed into your newsletter or whatever project you're doing. Then you can see how it's going to start to lay out. So I've done that one, but if we look at the original, you can see I've got smaller boxes here, and that's because we've split things up. So let me show you how to do this section here. This one here, if I select it, go to table layout and go to split cells. I only want one column, but I want three rows and click okay. And you can see now we've got one, two, 
three sections. You can see we've got a picture here, so we can actually move this one up. So I can just click that and move that up if I want to. Then we've got some text. So again, this is all you typing your own text. So I can pop it in here and then I can move this one up as well to suit my text. And then as you can see, we've got an image here. So if you want an image here, we can just type in image for now. So we know an image is going to go there. We know an image is going to go here. And then in this section here, you can see we've got another box here, an image and a box at the bottom. So that's going to be at the very bottom. So we can paste that in now. Don't worry about it going over to the extra page because we can just select these cells, right click, and then go all the way down. I'm sorry you can't see it, but it says delete cells and then select OK. And that's all the cells we need. So you can start to build up your project and see how it's going to lie. And if the text doesn't fit, you can reduce the text size. So if you select your text, you can go to home and you can actually use this icon here to reduce the size of your text or increase the size of your text. So you can really play around with the customization tools and paste it across. Then you can see we've got this title section here. So we need to split this into two. So I'm going to select the cell, go to layout, split cells. And again, I only want one column, two rows, click OK. OK, let's go to three. And then what we can do is pull this one down and then we can select these two and then we can merge those bottom cells. Then here we can paste in our title and then this one will be an image. So the table has been really useful ensuring we've got everything lined up really neatly. You can center your text if you want to or right align it doesn't matter and you can do that by going to the home tab and using these icons here. So now to insert the images. You can insert them directly into the table itself but I've found that that's created more problems than it's solved. So what I tend to do is insert them into the document itself. So go up to insert, go to pictures, click on the drop down. You'll obviously use your images from your files. I'm going to use the stock images available in Word. And in here, I'm just going to type in a subject matter and I'm going to select my first image. Now you'll see this image here not going to fit very well in this one here. So you have got to pick your images quite carefully or be prepared to cut them down. And I'll show you how to do that. So select your image, click insert. Once you've inserted your image, it's going to send everything crazy, but don't worry, just make sure it's selected. Go to picture format, go to wrap text and select in front of text. And now I can move it around and you can see it's got a slightly clunky movement. If you move it around and hit your alt key, it will smooth that out for you. So what we need to do is make this picture fit in this space here. So I'm going to go up and use the crop tool and I roughly know what sort of shape I need to make my image in order for it to fit. So it's about that, I think. And then I'm just going to press enter and you can see I've changed the shape of my image. So I'm just going to roughly move it to here, then resize it to fit. And then once again, move it, hitting my Alt key just to smooth that motion out. Now, if you hit the Alt key and produce another image, which I've done here, then just select it and delete it. Because if you have the Alt key on as well, it may duplicate your image. It's another quick copy and paste option. Now it's important that we try and make this line up with the edge of the text. I've just made the mistake of lining up with the edge of the line here, but actually we're going to switch those lines off. So what I actually need to do is line this up with the edge of my text here. And then we can reduce the size of it. This line isn't going to show, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can see the edge of here, the edge of here, and make it all line up, otherwise it will look a little bit odd. And that's part of making this look as neat and tidy and professional as possible. So again, I'm gonna go ahead, do that with one more image and show you, and then I'm actually going to speed up the video. So let's select this image here, click insert, go to wrap text in front of text. And then I want this to fit roughly that one there. So let's just reduce the size of it, see how well it fits. So I need to get the ball in. So I want most of this image on the side here. 
So I'm going to line this up with the text. Remember, keep lining it up with the text. And then I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to pull it down so it's in line with the top of the text here as well. It's really easy to forget that you've got to line it up with the text and not line it up with the lines of the table because otherwise it just simply won't look right. So let me just quickly show you. Let's switch all these lines off. Just select the table, go to table design, go to borders and select no borders. So you can see what I'm talking about in terms of lining all the images up with the actual text and not the lines. And now I'll speed up the video to insert these other images. So we're just going to make one small adjustment. So if I select the table, go to table design, select no borders. It's already selected, but select no borders. You can see all the borders have been switched off now. But what I want to do is put a line above and below my contacts and I want to change the color of that line. So I'm going to select the three cells that are affected by that top and bottom line. I'll show you what I mean on here. See this green line, let's just switch off those grid lines. You can see these two green lines here. So what you need to do is go up to pen color, select a color of your choice, which I've already done. Then I'm just going to increase the width. So it was originally one point and I've taken it to two and a quarter points. And then all I'm going to do is on the borders, I'm going to select the bottom border, which you can see is the bottom border of those cells and the top border of those cells as well. So once you're finished, you can save this as a Word document, a PDF file, or a template. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe, and have a great day.